Addicted to Mediocrity. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. I have OCD, Obsessive Coffee Disorder. <laughs> Love that mug. It's great, isn't it? And I do have obsessive coffee disorder, drinking a little bit of Java Junkie this morning. It's our summer blend. Summer is gone. We have just a few left. If you'd like it, better order soon. Of course, in regular and also K-Cups. We have them both. <clears throat> and our message of the month is this. God loves you in spite of your success or failure. We have that in a mug, posters, obviously, and t-shirts. And uh, there's one of the posters there. And folks, you can get all this stuff right here. We are metal, we are family .com. Well, I had an interesting dream. <clears throat> and I dreamt that we were all, a whole bunch of us, and we were all part of this church. And and uh, they asked us to draw things about our lives and about things that are important to us on all the walls. And and so we were drawing and I spent a lot of time drawing, which is in real interesting because I can't draw. But uh, I, I did this beautiful thing and everyone else, you know, painted all of this stuff. And then this woman came in who was obviously in charge and said, well, thank you all very much. That was very nice of you to do this, to decorate the hall. And then after everyone left, she erased everything and did things her own way and, and did it a lot more simplistic and a lot more, well, she said up to date. I, when we came back later, she said, how do you like this beautiful hall? I updated it and, and I made it look more pleasing and more friendly to people and, and just more um, in tune with society. And I said, well, I guess it looks okay, but you erased all of our stuff. She said, not all of it. And I said, well, show me anything that's original. And she looked around and she goes, Oh, I guess we didn't keep anything. And we all felt really bad because we'd all been erased, which I think is kind of an example of the modern church. In our quest to stay up to date and current and all of that, we erase the tradition. We erase some of the things that are important to us. And it isn't about musical styles or what's vogue in society this year, you know, what what is cool on HGTV or, you know, decor. What it really is about are people. And of course, church is about people. And in this great hall, it just became very sterile and they forgot the important things. There was a book that came out many years ago by Frankie Schaefer. It was called Addicted to Mediocrity. And uh, Frankie is Francis Schaefer's son. I'm not real excited about where he's at these days, but this was a fairly good book. And on the cover of the book, it's always been one of my favorite illustrations. He had a picture of the, the Sistine Chapel, beautiful. And there's this little guy that's a painter and he's in a, a white, you know, painter's outfit with a white cap and he's got a roller, a paint roller and he's rolling over the Sistine Chapel and painting it. And uh, and it's a great example of what we do with the arts and, and what we do with things that really are important to us because the true meaning is never in the decor, but it was in the heart of the people. And there are so many times, folks, that we forget about this. You know, speaking to people that are a lot younger, they seem very uninterested in what has gone before. And I'm sure I went through that too. But, you know, remembering my times in my little church where, you know, 
that I grew up in, little tiny church, where I remember the people, I remember the comments, I remember the nurturing. I remember all those things that were so important to me. And I remember the the ways that the church stayed the same and how it didn't change all the time, that it was, I knew when I came on Sunday, it was going to be the church that I had grown up with. Well, the church has changed several times. They're celebrating this week, actually, the 115th birthday of the church. I remember when they celebrated the 50th. I was just a young kid, but I remember it. And um, of course, it's changed since then. They, the old pews are gone. I still own the pew that uh, I sat in and that I grew up on because family sat kind of at the same place every Sunday. And uh, it's downstairs here at the house and I've kept it all of these years. Once they replaced them, I said, I want that pew. <laughs> but, you know, things that are important to us, things that have some meaning. And again, it's just a building, but it's a building that represents people. Sometimes we forget the important things. It's my point today. And sometimes we want to whitewash over things and we're addicted to mediocrity when there's so much more heart that we could have with things. And if we just remember why we're here and not just want to appeal to everybody, but bring the heart of the place along, because I think that's in the end what people are truly attracted to. There's a great scripture here in James chapter 1 and verse 27. And it says, Pure and unblemished religion, as it is expressed in outward acts, in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit and look after the fatherless and the widows and their distress, and to keep oneself uncontaminated by the secular world. Well, that goes for so many things, doesn't it? And you see, this is what it is. Our expression isn't what's on the walls and the decor. Our expression is the heart of the place, the heart of who we are, the heart of the body of Christ, the people. Don't forget that part. Folks, and don't forget you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.